We are to be priests in the service of the Lord in the house of the Lord, not in churches, not in denomination, not in a natural body of people. We'll read from 1 Peter 2, 9 again and say, You are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a sacred race, a people acquired by God to proclaim the wonders of him who called you out of darkness into his amazing light. Once you weren't God's people, but now you are. We'll deal with that first of all. A royal priesthood means kingly. If we're a royal priesthood, we act as priests and we act as kings. If we're a royal priesthood, we act as priests and we act as kings. We are not the king or the high priest, but we act in his kingdom as kings and priests. Once we were not a people, but now we are. Then I'd like to turn to Revelation 1, verse 6. And has made us a kingdom realm, not kings, as it says in the King James. Priests to his God and Father, to him be the glorious mighty strength for ever and ever. We are priests to God, Jesus Christ is high priest. He has a special place as high priest. We are not high priest. We are priests, which have a, have a different place to fulfill. Now in Ephesians chapter 2, it says, we are being built a holy temple unto the Lord. In Corinthians it says you are a temple. God's Spirit lives in you. You are not your own. And we are built upon Jesus Christ, the chief cornerstone. Also, I want us to keep this in mind. In, Revela in Romans 12, 1, Present your bodies a living sacrifice to God, acceptable to God, and your spiritual service has to be done. Be not conformed to this world, but be transformed or transfigured. And we have a video on that. So because we're a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, we can draw from Zechariah the implication of being the two who stand by the Lord of the whole earth. There is oil in the lamps. Oil speaks of the Spirit. It is not by might, nor by power, but by my Spirit, says the Lord. It is through the grace of the Gospel, as in Zechariah it says, they cry grace, grace to it, the grace of the Gospel. It's for the Gentiles now. It's for us. And the Syriac in Zechariah in relation to the nation says, and the Gentiles who were not, it says, and the Gentiles who were not recorded or accounted a people. That's a Syriac in the book of Zechariah. Well, we have now been regenerated we're called, we're sanctified. The Spirit bears witness to us. Before, neither Jew or Hebrew or Gentile obtained mercy. Under the Old Testament, the Israelites were not a people who received mercy. The Gentiles were not a people who received mercy. There was no way they could. But under the gospel, because it's a gospel of grace, there's mercy 
for us. There's mercy because of the shed blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. There's mercy for us because it proves that he's a God of mercy by sending his son Jesus to die on the cross and shed his blood. So Peter says, we're begotten again by the new birth. Now Jesus preached this new birth in John chapter 3 verse 3 to Nicodemus. He said, you must be born again. You must be born of the kingdom of heaven, not of earth. And Peter says, we are kept by the power of God through faith for salvation. He also says, we're not redeemed with silver or gold that is corruptible, but with the precious blood of Christ. 1 Peter 1.20 We are to be priests in the service of the Lord in the house of the Lord not in churches not in denominations not in a natural body of people in the ecclesia of the Lord which is a spiritual people who are spiritually born again now priests offer intercession. Believers are not intercessors. Years ago, I used to read about intercessors among the non-Pentecostal people. They were great in it. There was a famous intercessor, I forget his name, in England during World War I or II, I forget which. And the charismatics talk about Oh, I have a ministry of intercession. No, we do not. There is no such thing as you being an intercessor. You can never be an intercessor. Lots of people join up groups to become an intercessor. That's unscriptural. You can never make intercession. You can pray. It's the Holy Spirit who makes intercession. As it says in Romans chapter 8, Verse 6, all who think they are intercessors or who have been told they are intercessors, all who think there are intercessors, listen to this. We do not know how to pray as we ought. So how can you be an intercessor? But the Spirit himself makes intercession through us in other tongues basically. And God, who knows his thoughts and hearts, and the Spirit who knows God's thoughts and hearts, they communicate. We are not intercessors. We have a great intercessor, the Holy Spirit. There are two intercessors. Jesus makes intercession for us in heaven. I remember preaching this in India years ago and my translator said, nobody would have ever heard this in India. No, most people have never heard it at all. Uh, It must have been something the Lord gave me, I think. Anyway, Jesus Christ makes intercession for us in heaven. The Holy Spirit makes intercession for us on earth through us. Isn't that wonderful? Jesus makes intercession for us in heaven. The Holy Spirit makes intercession for us in us on earth. Isn't that wonderful? Two divine beings. Jesus Christ, our intercessor. The Holy Spirit, our intercessor. And it says the Holy Spirit himself asks on our behalf. That's when we pray in the Holy Ghost when we admit we don't know how to pray. Now to be a priest and a king before our God, because there is this kingly demeanor and bearing that we have, even though, as translators might say, we, it does not say we are kings. JMNT said, some manuscripts say, we're in a, a kingdom that gives us sovereign authority. 
where the sovereign authority comes through the Holy Ghost. Our priestship comes through the operation of the Holy Ghost. Being as kings comes through the operation of the Holy Ghost. How do we know the operation of the Holy Ghost? We go to 1 Corinthians chapter 12 to 14. As priests, you read it in 1 Corinthians 14. We pray in other tongues. We're praying, but it's the Holy Ghost in us praying. To act as kings with divine authority in a divine manner is through the gifts of the Spirit in 1 Corinthians 12. Oh, we are meant to be kings and priests, brethren and sisters. That should be the desire of our heart, to be a king and a priest. Always to be a king and a priest before God. Not before men, before God. A king and a priest. Now, a lot of people bring this kingship to ruling in the millennium because they say, Jesus said, you, sh you should rule over city, this city and that city. Firstly, he was not talking to us, so we let that be. It says in the book of Revelations 20, that those who had died reigned as kings for a thousand years. They were the martyrs. They were the martyrs. They were already in heaven. They were reigning for an indeterminate period until the Lord comes. Now what they were doing we do not know. But we do know the Lord would give them orders in heaven. But in Romans 5.17 it speaks of our reigning in life. We have been justified at the beginning of the chapter. Therefore we are justified by faith. So as justified, we reign in life, it says in verse 17. We reign with grace. We reign regarding righteousness. And the reign is over sin, over Satan, and over the world. Over sin in you and me, personally. We don't reign over somebody else's sins. We can judge them, we can rebuke them, we can point it out to them, but we do not reign over it. We reign over the sin in our lives, or should be. We reign in righteousness, because we have been justified by his grace. We reign over Satan. You shall tread on snakes and scorpions. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. You're wrestling against demons and principalities and powers. But you stand in faith, clad with the armour, so you're reigning over them. You're reigning over the demons. You're reigning over the world when you forsake your lust for the world. Everybody in their carnal nature has a lust for this world. They lust. We lust. I want lots of money. I want a good time. I must watch the football. I must go surfing all the time. I must do this and I must do that worldly minded, a lust for food. Uh, there's lots of lusts. Every one of us is tinged by this in our carnal nature. But we are meant to be more than conquerors. We are meant to reign over the lusts of this world. And that means we get rid of them. Because the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men, teaching us to deny lusts. That's the gospel. I have never preached it as the gospel, sadly. I have never heard anybody preach it as the gospel, sadly. 
If I was gospel preaching and having campaigns today, I would. How blind we can be. We have been given the gift of justification in this chapter. So we reign as kings in this matter. It's the grace of God. And so we stand by the Lord of all the earth, you and I. This has so taken a hold of me, it's unbelievable what the Lord wants us to be. Kings and priests to our God. Do you want to have that implanted in your life now by the Holy Spirit? That you will keep on, keep on, keep on desiring to be a king and a priest in the household of God and seeing it happen it takes perseverance, it takes grace, it takes faith, it takes prayer in the Holy Ghost, it takes a willingness, it takes waiting on your ministry. Do you want to be a king and a priest? Let's accept the challenge to stand by the Lord of the whole earth in this twofold ministry as kings and priests unto our God as a Joshua and as a Rubabel. Yeah. As a Joshua and as a Rubabel. As a priest and a king. The Lord bless you and grant you the operation of the Holy Ghost in you until it happens often. And for me also, for every one of us who name the name of Jesus, the one who is our Savior. Amen. Jesus Christ makes intercession for us in heaven. The Holy Spirit makes intercession for us on earth through us. Isn't that wonderful?